In the previous lecture, we calculated the total energy following the conventional approach. Now in this lecture, which is part 3 of solved problems based on the energy of continuous time signals, we will solve two problems which you can see on your screen. In the first problem, signal is x60 and by the help of this signal, we will understand what is the effect of time shifting, time reversal, time scaling, amplitude reversal and amplitude scaling on the total energy of continuous time signal. So this problem is important and the conclusions which we will obtain in this problem we will use to solve the second problem. So let's start with the solution. From minus infinity to zero, signal value is equal to zero. From zero to two, signal value is equal to four. And from two to infinity, signal value is again equal to zero. We can calculate the total energy by using the formula integration minus infinity to infinity mod xt square dt here signal is represented by x 60 so i will write 6 here i will not use the formula to calculate the total energy because we have used this formula in many questions i will use one property of total energy and by using this property we will calculate the total energy we know total energy is equal to area under area under the plot mod xt square here signal is x60 so the area under mod x60 square will be the total energy we can calculate the area under the mod x60 square and the first step is to find out mod x60's plot and as you can see x60 plot is always positive therefore the modulus will also have the same plot so x60 will have the same plot as x6t's modulus and now we will plot signal mod x6t whole square from minus infinity to zero signal x6t or signal mod x60 is equal to zero so the square is also equal to zero from zero to two signal is equal to four and the square will be 16 so this is how the plot will look from 0 to 2 and from 2 to infinity again the signal will be equal to 0 so this is the plot of mod x60 square and we can easily calculate this area the height here is equal to 16 the height is equal to 16 and the width is equal to 2 so the area is equal to 16 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 32 so 32 is the value of total energy and this is our answer you can get the same result using the formula but as we have very good understanding of how to use the formula of total energy we have used this property now let's perform the time reversal time reversal and we will see if there is any effect on the total energy or not this time the signal is x6 minus t we have obtained this signal by performing the time reversal and the waveform of this signal will look like this it is simple mirror image of signal x60 about the y-axis from minus 2 to 0 signal value is equal to 4 and if you calculate mod x6 minus t you will have the same plot so x6 minus t will be same as mod x6 minus t because signal value is positive now we will obtain the plot of signal mod x6 minus t square because the area under this plot will be same as the total energy of signal x6 minus t and i will plot the waveform of this signal along with this waveform so that we can compare from minus 2 to 0 signal value is equal to 4 so from minus 2 to 0 mod x6 minus t square will have the value equal to 16 so the plot will look like this this yellow plot is the plot of signal mod x6 minus t square and we can easily calculate the area this time also the height is equal to 16 and the width here is equal to 2 so the area 
is equal to 16 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 32. So the total energy this time also is equal to 32. So we can say that there is no effect of time reversal, no effect of time reversal on the total energy. So this is one conclusion and now we will perform the time shifting, the time shifting. Now instead of following the complete process, I will directly write down what will be the result. You can perform the time shifting by yourself and calculate the total area. I will write down this signal, one example signal in which we will perform the time shifting. The signal is x6 t minus 2. So you can see we have performed the time shifting and the original signal which was x6 t is now shifted towards the right by 2. So the waveform of this new signal will look like this. From 2 to 4 the signal value is equal to 4. From 2 to 4 the signal value is equal to 4. Now using this you can easily obtain the area of signal mod x6 t minus 2 whole square and when you calculate the area of this signal you will find it is equal to 32. So again the total energy is equal to 32 and we can say that there is no effect of time shifting on the total energy of the signal. Now let's perform the other operation and this time we will perform amplitude reversal. We will perform the amplitude reversal. In case of amplitude reversal, we have a signal which is minus of x6 t and we know how to obtain the waveform of the signal after performing the amplitude reversal. When you perform the amplitude reversal, simply take the mirror image of the original signal about the x-axis. So the original signal was x6 t whose waveform you can clearly see here. And when you take the mirror image of this waveform, it will look like this. From 0 to 2, the signal value will be equal to minus 4 from 0 to 2. Now we will obtain modulus of minus x6 t and it will be equal to x6 t. So we have the waveform which will be same as the original waveform like this. And when you obtain the area under the curve mod minus x6 t whole square you will find the area under this curve you will find it is equal to 32. So this time again the total energy is equal to 32 and we can say that there is no effect of amplitude reversal on the total energy. No effect of amplitude reversal on the total energy E. Now we will perform the next operation which is time scaling. Let's say the signal is equal to x6 twice of t. So we have performed the time scaling and if signal is scaled by this the energy will be equal to E by 2 where E is the energy of signal x60 and as we have already calculated the energy of signal x60 equal to 32, we can say x6 twice of t is having the energy equal to 32 by 2 which is equal to 16. When you calculate the energy for this signal, you will find it is equal to 16. And from here we have deduced this result. So I will generalize it. Let's say there is some signal xt having the total energy as E, then you have another signal in which you have performed the time scaling. Let's say the signal is x a t. Then this time the energy is going to be E over mod of a. And a should not be equal to zero. So we can say that time scaling is having some effect on the total energy. And the effect is this one. If E is the initial energy and you scale the time by a, then the initial energy will be divided by mod of a where a is not equal to zero. So write down this conclusion because we will use it in the next problem. 
Now let's perform the next operation and the next operation is amplitude scaling amplitude scaling the original signal is x60 and this time we will perform the amplitude scaling we will multiply 2 to the original signal x60 and uh, this time the total energy is going to be multiplied by mod 2 square and as we have already obtained the total energy E for the original signal x60 as 32 we will have 4 multiplied by 32 and this is equal to 128 so this is the energy of signal twice of x60 because x60 was having the energy equal to 32 and as we have multiplied x60 by this number 2 we have square of 2 here multiplied with the initial energy in this way we have 128 and I will generalize this for all the other signals if there is signal xt having the total energy as E and you multiply this signal by constant k and the new signal is k of xt and you can see we are performing the amplitude scaling then the new signal is going to be mod k square into E so this is another important result and we can say that amplitude scaling is having some effect on the total energy and the effect you can see here the number by which you are multiplying this signal the energy will be multiplied by the square of mod of that number you can easily obtain this result calculate the total energy for twice of x60 you will get 128 and from here we can generalize this result now let's move to the second problem we have all the tools to solve the second problem in this problem there is signal x70 which is having the energy equal to 4 and then there is another signal yt which is twice of j x7 2t minus 1 now we need to tell what is the energy of this signal yt so let's perform the different operations one by one the original signal is x70 and the total energy is equal to 4 now I will perform the time shifting x7 t minus 1 and we have seen in case of time shifting there is no effect on the total energy so the total energy is going to be 4 then I will perform the time scaling twice of t minus 1 in case of time scaling there is effect on the total energy and as we are multiplying t by 2 this total energy 4 will be divided by 2 and in this way we have the total energy reduced to 2 now I will perform the amplitude scaling as we are multiplying 2j to signal x7 2t minus 1 so 2j x7 2t minus 1 we have already seen what will happen to the total energy in case of amplitude scaling mod 2j whole square multiplied by the energy which is 2 2j whole square is equal to 4 so 4 multiplied by 2 is equal to 8 so 8 is the answer of the second question now I hope you understand what will happen to the total energy when you perform different operations and you also know how to deal with this kind of questions in which there are multiple transformations involved so if you have any question regarding this lecture you may ask in the comment section I will end this lecture here see you in the next one